The Dodgers have made the World Series three times in the past four years and they even won it in 2020 despite it only being a 60 game year. And while those other World Series losses have kind of hurt them in this category, I feel the Dodgers are going to be a dynasty and there's like a lot of reasons why. So hi guys, I'm Jake and I'm going to explain why I believe the Dodgers are going to be the next dynasty in the MLB. So the Dodgers are really famous for doing something that the Pirates were trying to do but they failed because they didn't have the money. And this was to win now and build for the future. And what this did for the Dodgers is that they weren't really going to deal with too many significant prospects. But they were still going to be aggressive like pretty much right now, you know, they were still going to sign players, make key trades, you know, stuff like that. And they were able to do this so well that they've been at the top of their division for so many years. And I look at their teams the past four years, and it really shows how amazing this method worked whenever they do have the money. And there's a lot of key factors on how this worked because, you know, this method doesn't work for every single team. You have to have the right things in place. And one of those things that they currently have is a great development team. And right now, I can name you 10 top 100 prospects that the Dodgers have had that really develop. So I can name, you know, Will Smith, Corey Seager, Cody Bellinger, Alex Verdugo, even though he did get traded to the Red Sox, but I'll talk about that more later. They also developed Dustin May, Tony Gonsolin, Walker Buehler, even Julio Urias as a quality, you know, six starting pitcher, person like that. And players like Jock Peterson and Yasiel Puig, they did develop. I'm a little bit disappointed in them. But if that's the worst, really, that they could get, and those are really quality MLB players, you know, former All-Stars, then you know your team is doing a great job at developing. And the only person that I could say that I'm really, truly disappointed that the Dodgers really couldn't develop so far is Gavin Lux. And he only played like 40 games, so he has so much time to become the player that he's supposed to be. So, you know, look at all those players that they develop. That makes it where they don't need to go after this crazy free agents or these crazy, you know, trades that they don't need to. And also, if you look at those players, only two of them were first round picks, Walker Bueller and Corey Seager. And they still developed all those guys to become quality MLB players. And they were even able to be top 100 prospects. Like, they just are amazing at developing players. And now I look at players, you know, they acquired that people didn't really want to have on their team. And the first example, kind of like the biggest one on this list, is Justin Turner. The Mets pretty much released Justin Turner and the Dodgers picked him up. And through developing, this weak hitting middle infielder turned into the franchise third baseman the Dodgers had. And I look at a guy like Max Muncy, who is horrible for the athletics. The Dodgers gave him a shot and now he's an all-star first baseman. And Enrique Hernandez and Chris Taylor aren't guys that had those types of success. But they're still quality utility guys. You know, Enrique Hernandez isn't on the Dodgers anymore but whenever he was you know he was a really good utility guy that they got from the Marlins and Chris Taylor from the Mariners like these guys weren't that great and they became solid hitting utility guys that could be plugged in anywhere and all four of those guys contributed to the Dodgers World Series win and that's something special when you can develop like a majority of your top 100 guys and you can develop guys that no one really believed in like that can build a championship team alone and despite, like, you know, the Dodgers have made some free agent moves, which I'll mention later, but still, that could win you a championship. Okay, so now let's look at another thing the Dodgers do really well, and they're smart, yet aggressive in acquiring players. Now let's look at the biggest one here, and that's Mookie Betts. You know, I like this... $300 million signing way more than a Bryce Harper or Manny Machado because you know Mookie Betts is one of the best right now and you know his regression shouldn't be as bad as those other guys once you know he gets older past his prime stuff like that and another really smart free agent signing the Dodgers did was get Trevor Bauer other than Clayton Kershaw the Dodgers have a lot of youth in their rotation and now they get a veteran guy only three years you know they're only gonna have him three years so pretty much whenever he gets to the point where he's past his prime the Dodgers don't have him on their team anymore if they don't want to re-sign him. And this is so smart because they're not locking him down seven years where, you know, he's going to be on the team until he's like 36. And his contract turns into a bad contract. Here, as long as Trevor Bauer does, you know, his usual stuff, this will never be a bad contract because it's only three years. And, you know, this gives the Dodgers a really good starting pitcher to where, you know, Clayton Kershaw is kind of debating if he should retire or not. And this also gives them, you know, a bridge gap for their next good starting pitcher that they'll have. Because you know how good they are at developing. You know, they're going to have a stud starting pitcher. And another free agent signing I really like the Dodgers did is AJ Pollock. In 2020, he was arguably one of their best 
hitters, like statistically, and in 2019 he was pretty solid as well. And he's not for too much money, and he was able to put the Dodgers in a situation where they could use Alex Verdugo in a trade for Mookie Betts. Because, you know, they were able to get such a really good outfielder in Pollock, they had Cody Bellinger in center field, they had Alex Verdugo in right, and they were able to kind of swap Alex Verdugo for Mookie Betts. I really feel the Dodgers wouldn't be so comfortable doing that if they didn't have another really good outfielder there. And with all the Dodgers, you know, staff, their general manager, everything, they're doing a really good job with their team. They're staying extremely competitive every single year. You know, I, and also like, the Yankees are pretty solid at developing their guys, but a lot of their success relied on the players they paid a lot. If you don't count extensions that the Dodgers have given out, they hardly really used the free agency to get big players. And whenever they did, they were really smart about it. They didn't go after just every single big free agent. And this is how they're in arguably the best situation in baseball. You know, you, if you look at a team like the Red Sox, they won the World Series in 2018, but after that, they were just not good. They paid so much money to so many players, and a lot of their success had to do with because they were a high payroll team. You know, if they didn't have the money, they wouldn't be able to win a World Series. But if the Dodgers didn't really have the money, they would have easily made it to the World Series at least twice because they still have gotten the players that they ended up having. And now they are breaking the bank a little bit, but it's also really worth it because of the situation they're in. And they're not in a situation like, you know, the Red Sox where they're in a extreme rebuild even though they are a high market team. And you know, I don't see the Dodgers rebuilding anytime soon. And I feel like they're going to be a dynasty just because they're able to continue this success. And that's why I feel like the Dodgers are going to be a dynasty. I see like at least two or three more World Series that the Dodgers are going to win eventually. And you know, I really respect them as a team. You know, I'm not a Dodgers fan. You know, you guys know I'm a Pirate and Steelers fan. But I really respect them because it seems like they do the right things almost every single year. And yeah, they also had their, you know downside of trades where they traded Josh Fields for Jordan Alvarez. And they also traded a top 100 prospect in O'Neill Cruz for Tony Watson. But still, those guys were really unknown guys. They just ended up developing in their new system. At that point, it was really hard to like predict how well they'd be. But looking at them now, they probably wouldn't be complaining because they won a World Series. And like I said before, they're going to have many more to come. So that's going to be the video. Thank you guys for watching. I know it's not quite a long video, but you know, I just... I just felt like this was a really good topic to get across. And I hope you guys enjoyed, and you guys are the 79 best people on YouTube, and I'll see you guys in two more days.